Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are here for another RAS Weekends video where we're going to be looking at the AOR system for RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6 and recruitment, of course, as well. Now, last time in the Cultures video, which you can check out down below, we did go over the cultures and had a little bit of a sneak preview for the AOR. But I am pleased to let you guys know that AOR is now across the whole map. Every single region in the game now has access to AOR troops based on the native starting cultures of these regions at the start of the game. Pretty awesome and I cannot wait to show this to you guys. First of all, I've got to let you know the amount of work that has gone into this system. They started it uh, trying to test it and create it back in August, and they had loads of different ideas around that, and it's been remade four times. Initially, they wanted a bit of a government system, so you could choose between different types of government, a sort of regional government or a local government that you wanted to put in. But unfortunately, they ran into an, an issue where having too many buildings in the game will just break the engine, basically. <laughs> that only Feral can fix that issue. So hopefully Feral do get that fixed at some point. They also tried not tying recruitment to the level of city as well. But of course, with that one, it was just a bit confusing and not really very intuitive. So you would have them all on this level and you wouldn't know what was coming next uh, with them. So they have tried many different things. So chances are for any suggestions that you're going to suggest, it's likely been tried all ready, guys, as well. So let's talk in generic about the recruitment. Because previously, to recruit, if it was not your native culture, for example, in Torion over here, what you would have to do is you would have to build... The recruitment building up to the level, you would also have to build the barracks. And then there was also another building called, for the Greeks, the Greek colony building that you would have to build to that level as well to build. Now it's streamlined down a lot. So you only have to build the, the recruitment building and now whichever barracks level you want to get to. So for example, for this one, if you want to get your more elite troops like the Crisis Speeders and the Chalka Speeders, you are going to have to get up to Army Barracks level 2 or 3, not just the recruitment building by itself. So always remember that, guys. Although the recruitment building, so say this building over here, you can see this requires a high pass. This requires 4th tier barracks. The Scythe Chariots require 4th tier barracks. And it tells you in here what level that you need to get 4th tier stables for those guys. 4th tier barracks for those guys. Galatian Thorakitai, that's uh, for Celtic natives. Zistaphoroi, third tier stable. So, yeah, make sure you are checking that and you don't just build the recruitment building, which, of course, would not be appropriate and not get you those units automatically. So how does the AOR recruitment work then now? And... In general, guys, it's quite hard to show with the Seleucids because the Seleucids don't really have that many homelands at the start of the game. But in general, the recruitment hubs in your homeland will only have your factional units. So this is a Macedonian city, uh, but it does have some AOR. But you can see we have factional units available on level one, not just AOR. And level two, more factional units. Level 3, all the factional units. And level 4, up to the elite units as well. But there is a heavy asterisk alongside this, guys. That uh, if it is in a region like Seleucia Pisidia here, is in Pisidia that has units available, you can see that our Pisidian units and Macedonian hoplites available here because they are unique to this region. I will show you another example. We'll just toggle the fog of war. So if we toggle the fog of war, for example, if you are Nossos and you are Dorian, you will take Gortin over here that's also Dorian. So when you build your first level of recruitment, it's very likely you're going to get your Dorian units, your factional units, but you will probably also get a Gortinian unit or two with the AOR system because Gortin has some unique units. 
Similar thing over here for, say, like Argos. If you are a Dorian faction, say you are Sparta and you take Athens, you will get your factional units from the get-go because it's also Dorian as well. But you'll also get Argive units because they are a unique unit to Argos. The same thing with Messene and Ellis, those sorts of things. So that heavy asterisk remains there because you will get unique AOR units in some of these unique places as well as your factional units if it's in your homeland. But in general, in your homeland, you will just get your factional units for all of the levels. So in a region that does not have your factional units because it is not your homeland region, you will just get AOR for the first couple of levels of recruitment. You can see here, we get the Dehaean Horse Archers for level two and level three at Nisa. Then you get some of your factional units, none of your elites, but some of your factionals. And then level four, remember, is just your factional unit. So overall, guys, when you are building these recruitment buildings, remember that level one, two, and three will provide you with AOR units. But level 4 will take away the AOR units and just provide you with the factional units of your faction. So if you want to recruit AOR units, do not upgrade to level 4 recruitment. Keep it on level 3. So let's go through a couple of examples, guys. Over here in Tarada, it is a Thracian settlement, but it has the official religion of Macedonian. So... When we go through these four, I'm going to show you what sort of units you're going to get from each tier for the AOR. So in tier one, for the AOR, you're going to get your basic AOR units, your sort of levy AOR units, the Thracian Slingers, Thracian Hippocontistae, and some Macedonian Hoplites as well, because we are technically right next to Macedon. And then level two is going to be sort of some of your more expansive AOR units, not quite elite just yet, but sicker cavalry are pretty good, and you get long spearmen, some Thracian archers as well, which are all okay units, not fantastic, but the sicker cavalry are decent, so you get some better AOR units with that, and your basic factional units, maybe as well, depending on the region. Some regions, like I say, uh, that you conquer, regions that you conquer, are not going to have your factional units in recruitment two. Recruitment 3 is where you start getting your factional units in regions that aren't your culture that you conquer. But you're going to get access then to the more elite AOR units. So here we have the Thracian Noble Cavalry, the Thracian Romphi Foroi. So really good AOR units in there for you as well, as well as the Seeker Cavalry, which we saw. And then, of course, when I say, like I said before, when you get to level 4, it's just your factional units. So, um... That is how it goes. Level 1, Levy AOR. Level 2, more of the AOR roster. And level 3, the elite AOR troops. And then level 4, just your factional troops. And level 3 has a few of your factional troops as well. So that is how it's going to work for most of the places that you conquer, guys. Most of the places. And like I say, there's a lot of places that have singular, unique units. So, for example, the Cretan nations. Like we said before, Argos. Uh, Megalopolis as well has me Megalopolitan Chalcus Speeders that you can get just from this city. So one thing to note, guys, if you are getting a lot of AOR troops, you can only retrain them, obviously, in places that you have the recruitment facility to do so. So, for example, if I recruited some Sicker Cavalry from here, I'm not going to be able to re uh, retrain them from Marinea because it just has my factional units. You're going to have to retrain them in Tirada here. So make sure if you are recruiting a lot of AOR units that you keep them in the areas where they can be trained. So for example, don't recruit a load of Sicker Cavalry and send them to Iran. Don't recruit a load of Horse Archers in Iran and uh, send them across. So over here in Nisa, for example, don't recruit a load of Dehaean Horse Archers and send them to Egypt because you're not going to be able to retrain them. I mean, you can do that, but it's going to be difficult to retrain them. So that, of course, is one thing you want to keep in mind. And like I say, there's loads of places now with unique units. Like Thessaly, you'll get Thessalian Lancers, Argos, Achaea, Epirus. Everywhere has AOR units if it's not your homeland 
culture. And when I say your homeland culture, it's the culture you start as your dominant culture at the start of the game. For example, the Seleucids are Macedonian. The Ptolemies are Macedonian. Pergamon, I believe, is actually... Um, what's this one? Mycenaean, but they are Macedonian as well. Some of these other ones have more unique ones. So in the center of Greece over here, we've got Arcadian. So if they recruit, if they try, um, take another Arcadian city, it'll be factional recruitment. Whereas if they then go and take, say, uh, a Dorian city, it'll be more AOR recruitment. If you're Germanic and you take a Celtic settlement, you're going to get Celtic AOR for those first two levels. And then a mix of your, your recruitments for three and four, with four just being your factional units. Whereas if you take a Germanic city, it's likely not going to be AOR, it's just going to be your factional units, if that all makes sense. So if you're taking the same culture as you, it's going to be factional units. If you're taking a foreign culture, it's going to be AOR. That is the simple version of it. A couple of things to note, guys. This little symbol here shows that it's AOR. So if you see that symbol, it will show that it's an AOR unit. Now, there's also a symbol for mercenaries, which is that symbol there. If you see that symbol, that means that it's a mercenary. It's got all the coins there. And this symbol shows that it's AOR. So you can tell very easily now, based on the unit card, what that unit is and sort of whether it's AOR or mercenary. Second thing to note, guys, is unfortunately they, they could not tie this AOR to culture in terms of percentage-wise. So they couldn't, for example, make Phrygian cavalry only recruitable if the culture of here was 50% Phrygian. That unfortunately did break the engine. So <laughs> don't worry about that. That is something they tried to do, and unfortunately, the engine just could not cope with it. And uh, like I say, in future, they hope to make this whole system more enhanced, more detailed, and have more nuances to it as well. So this system will be worked on for the next few updates, very likely. But for now, I think it's a very nice streamlined system that really does add a lot to the game. Because you can get AOR everywhere, get unique units. For example, as Sparta with your terrible cavalry, it's a good idea to take Thessaly now so you can get Thessalian Lancers. And you might go after certain areas to get certain units. For example, going down to Carrier to get the Carrion Heavy Infantry, which are a fantastic unit. That sort of thing will be really cool to see in the game. And I can't wait to have, you know, armies of different units from different places. Very more realistic as well. You could have an army with like Argiv Hoplites and Megalopolitan Chalka Speeders and Achaean Thorakitai and Thessalian Lancers all in one army ready to go and fight and take on someone else. And I think that's really cool. Adds a lot of depth and flavor to the recruitment system and allows you to kind of recruit what you want really, which I think is fantastic. Gives you a lot more freedom in the recruiting there as well, which is awesome. And finally, just to let you know, they have handpicked the units. So it isn't like you can recruit every single unit of another faction. For example, it's you don't I don't think you can recruit Seleucid cataphracts from a Seleucid land. Um, and like you can't recruit, say, the Belgic champions if you take Belgae, for example, the Belgae, for example. So those sort of really unique units to factions will remain unique units to factions. So you're not going to see loads of generic unit rosters out there of other factions uh, being taken. Sort of the unique units of the Ptolemies, the Seleucids of every faction stay unique to that faction. And they've handpicked certain units to uh, be AOR units. For example, I'll give you an easy example with the Thracians. You can get the uh, Noble Cavalry, which is great, and the Romphophoroi, but there's no Thracian Royal Guard there. They are a unique unit to the Thracians, and you can't recruit them, which I think is good, because uh, otherwise you could just make the most OP armies <laughs> of all time uh, if you wanted to. So, yeah, I think it's a good uh, addition that they've handpicked those units, and you can't take away the really unique units of other factions and make them your own. Instead, you will get sort of You'll still get elite units, but not those really cool, unique units that make a faction worth playing. But overall, like I say, I think it's an awesome addition, adding loads more depth 
to the uh, recruitment system. And also, loads of cool options now for armies. You can have many different styles of armies per nation, which will be really, really cool going forward. Well, guys, I think that's going to be it for today. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you like and subscribe. It will really help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.